Welcome to People Doing Good for Others, where we celebrate and praise and hold in the light those who are truly making significant contributions in our communities. I'm Gary York, and I'm grateful to be here. We want to thank you for being with us today. My featured guest is Susan Cogdill, and she's going to talk about the uh, her life in Hillsboro growing up, a graduate of UNC. She's executive director of the Wilkes Community Partnership for Children. And she also has a therapy dog and his name's Rudy. And our sponsors are River Street Productions, Wilkes Communications, and WIFM. And I'm so grateful again to have Susan Cogdill with us. Good morning to you. Thanks, Gary. Glad Tell to us be about here. Uh, your servant's heart as you grew up in a community of people who gave and cared a lot. Well, I grew up in Hillsboro, which is near Chapel Hill. Um, spent a lot of time doing things with the church. I was in Girl Scouts. Um, just did, I was just thinking about the work that I did as a Girl Scout with colonial costumes celebrating um, the Revolutionary War along the um, courthouse lawn. We did that every year and um, dressed up in the costumes. And my mom even made the costumes. So that was a, wow. a good thing to do. And that was like, what, 4th of July or something like that? Um, it was usually in the spring. It yeah. was related to the Revolutionary War. Hillsboro yeah. is a very historic town with a lot of historical homes. Your choice to go to UNC Chapel Hill and how wonderful that was. Well, I started out at Virginia Commonwealth in Richmond. Um, I was interested in UNC, but I was interested in going to Virginia Commonwealth to kind of move away because our home was 20 oh, minutes yes, from campus. Sure. And um, so I ended up at UNC and I loved it. I loved the basketball. It was a great program and I graduated with a degree in dental hygiene. Um, I transferred after two years at Virginia Commonwealth to UNC because once I was away from home, I wanted to be closer and experience the UNC lifestyle. Yeah. So I was able to do that. And how'd you get to Wilkes County? <laughs> Interesting story. <laughs> so I graduated from dental hygiene and I was really interested in the public health side of it. Um, and so from there, there were two openings in the state. One was in um, Wilkesboro, in Wilkes County, and one was in Winston-Salem. So I knew nothing about Wilkes County, but I knew it was west of Winston-Salem. So I made a conscious decision. If I was going west, I was gonna go as far west in the state as I could. And the only thing I knew about Wilkes County at that time was the caution light at 421 and 16, because I used to go up to Boone and ice skate in the summer. And so I was very familiar with that was Wilkes County. So I moved here straight out of college, didn't know a soul and started Not my a job. soul. I knew no one. I, when I was looking for a place to live, I was at a total loss. Um, I really didn't have anyone to talk oh, to. Goodness. I had to have a reference for my, um, to get my phone installed, my landline back then. And uh, I had to use our health director. And he agreed to let me because I had no local references. Um, wow. Were but you I just met my totally husband here. Uh, petrified? Were you afraid? No, no, no. People were very welcoming. Um, I immediately felt at home, um, met a lot of people. My job, I went out to 16 elementary schools. And so I made a lot of friends immediately working with teachers. I would go in classrooms and teach dental health education. And so I had oh friends immediately from that. It was, it, it was a great experience. So it was it just opened arms and invited you in. I felt very comfortable here. The one thing that people ask me a lot, they would say, who's your mom, who's your dad? And I would say, I'm not from here because people wanted to connect yes. me to someone. So my children were yeah. able to experience that here, um, but, but I had no connections when I moved here. <laughs> uh, ice skating. Yeah. Was yeah. that just a real, uh, something you love to do or you did it a lot? Well, I worked at the ice rink. My uncle owned an ice rink in Hillsboro, and it was really the only one that was in the area at that time. And people would come from Raleigh, Greensboro, just to ice skate. And uh, so I was able to work at the ice rink. And then when I got off work, then I would skate for two or three hours. Really? So it was, wow. it was kind of my thing when I was younger. Along, I took dance lessons and did all that too. Oh, yeah. But um, really liked ice skating. 
Susan Cogdale, you're the executive director of the Partnership for Children. Yes. What is, uh, just share with us, what, what does, what's the mission of the Partnership for Children? Well, we're a 24-year-old nonprofit, and with that, we work to ensure that children enter school healthy and ready to succeed. So all of the activities that we do, all of our program centers around children and families. Five years and younger, right? That's right. Birth to five is what we say. Okay. You know, 90% of brain development occurs by the time a child is age five. So that's what makes our job so critical. Wow. Now, how do we find those families with children? How do they, how do they get, how do y'all get together? Well, the child care centers are a natural connection. We okay. have a lot of children that are in child care centers here in the county. Um, we do outreach events. Um, we, we meet with families, but probably the most important program that helps us identify families is the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. It's a, a great connection because children enroll in the Imagination Library and so we have a database and so we are able to contact all types of families, locations within Wilkes County, um, all socioeconomic status. I mean, it's just, it's a great way to get in touch with families. So a child might be involved with the Dolly Parton Foundation mm -hmm. before the partnership, is that? Well, they're, the partnership sponsors the Dolly Parton Imagination Just Library. tell us what, how does that work? Well, four years ago, we brought the Dollywood, um, Dolly, Dolly Parton Imagination Library to the county. It um, is out of the Dollywood Foundation and obviously it's sponsored by Dolly Parton. It's an international program now and a local agency has to sponsor the program. And so the Partnership for Children sponsored the program and we started out in February of 2014 and we had 200 children enrolled. And we basically got the word out the best way we could. I literally carried brochures in my purse. And when I shopped at Walmart, a lot of families are at Walmart or the grocery store, I would stop and say, hey, do you live in Wilkes County? And they'd look at me and go, yeah. And I'd say, well, I want to tell you about this program. And I'd have, to, I'd have to get the word out free. I'd have to say free because a lot of people thought I was soliciting and sure. trying to sell something. But we literally beat the streets to get people enrolled to begin to with. To get started. Yeah, and now we have about 2,200 families that are enrolled, and so it has just blossomed. And um, Tell us some more of the ins and outs of it. Well, a book is delivered each month in the mail to the enrolled child, and it's a developmentally appropriate book. So if it's an infant, they're getting what's called a board book. It's real thick. It's kind of like a cardboard book. Um, as they get older, they get um, paperback books. Some of them are real n winners, like Newberry, um, those type things. Um, so each month the child gets each a book. Month. Each month. It's delivered directly to their home until they're five years old. So a child that starts when they're born would end up with 60 books when they finish up. The first book is The Little Engine That Could. That's Dolly's signature book. She loves that book. Every book comes with a message from Dolly. And on the back cover, there is a, what you do when you start reading, what you do um, before you read, and at the end. It's like, a, it's a guide for parents to know how to read to their children. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's, it's a, a great tool for families, and our families love it. I hear constant comments about, my child looks forward to this book. It's so important, and it takes money to do it. It's about $30 for each child to receive those books, but it is free. We fundraise, United Way gives $30 us- $30 a year. $30 a year. Okay. So you can do the multiplication. Okay. It's not it's not cheap, but it is it is so wonderful to put the books in the children's hands. Um, we have private donations, and then we use Smart Start funds that come from the state. That's part of our funding. But the Imagination Library is just the most beautiful thing for our children in Wilkes. Uh, state legislators allocated some money this past year to counties that did not have the program, and then they also supplemented 
the program at Wilkes and gave us some extra money and we had to agree to recruit extra children and obviously we surpassed what we were supposed to recruit this year. Um, but like I said, it's free and it's free to everyone. And people think there's some kind of catch. Uh, I'll talk to parents sometimes and they'll say, well, you're gonna let me have it free for three months and then you're gonna send me a bill. And I'm like, no, I you'll never get a bill. And we can't even fundraise with families. I could not go to parents and say, could you, would you be willing to sure. pay? Yep. Um, it's, it's totally, totally free. Yeah. And I, I always like to tell the story of why I wanted the Imagination Library for our children. When I was a young girl, my mom and dad subscribed to the Dr. Seuss Book Club and they made sure that I got a book in the mail every month. And I was fortunate they had the money to pay for me to be a part of the book club. I still have that original book. It's very, very old. It's been passed from family member to family member. It oh was returned goodness. back to me and my children were able to read the book. But I knew the joy that I felt when I got that book every month. It made me feel so special. And I wanted our children to experience that. And when they get the book, it has their name on it. It does. Mm -hmm. It's mailed to them. It has their name. And, um, you know, the funny thing is the return address has my name on it. And sometimes people go, oh, you're Susan Cogdell? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's me. And they're like, your name is on the return address label. But they're uh, shipped out of Tennessee. The Dollywood Foundation ships them to the children. And we, we pay the bill. So it's a win-win for everybody. Do you remember the idea coming to us? Or did someone know about it? And, or there were, there were a couple of counties in the state that were offering it, and I kept hearing about it. And once I realized the whole process, um, I was able to fundraise to start with, and I had, it was Victory Automotive that was here, the Toyota dealership. It was the first sponsor you had. Uh -huh. They gave me almost $9,000, because I felt like if I could get one sponsor, then other people yeah, yeah. would sponsor. Yeah. And that's what happened. Um, but I had to have that initial money. And really, it's amazing. I didn't even talk to the local dealership, which now is a different dealership. I wrote a letter to their corporate office, and I said, well, it was actually an email. I wrote the email, and I told them about the program and what it would mean to our children. And, and they sent the money. And I still cannot believe that that happened. So it was meant to be. It was meant to be. And um, it was the first step. My uh, goodness, never my give goodness. Up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you said it's uh, healthy readers to succeed. Is that what we said? For our mission? Yeah. Um, it's to ensure that children enter school healthy and ready to succeed. So our programs are about helping children to be successful. And, and that fact, healthy. about 90% again, tell us that again. 90% of brain development occurs before age five. Your brain is the only organ that is not fully developed when you're born. Okay. So okay. all those little connections, well. the neurons happen. And that's why there's windows of opportunity. So at certain stages, you want to introduce different things to children. You know, that's why they learn to crawl before they walk and all those little neurons and connections are being made. Wow. The synapse. Yep. And you Pretty talked cool. you talked about real real men read. Oh, Tell us yes. about that program. Well, that's another program that we brought in about the same time as Imagination Library. It was a, um, a little bit later in the year. Um, I wanted a program for our preschoolers. I wanted to have a volunteer reader come in. And so Real Men Read was a United Way program. I think it's in Indiana, Ohio. I'm not sure what other states. But I did some reading on it, and I thought, this is a neat program. How can we make that happen? And so, um, Lo um, not Lowe's, but the United Way had a venture grant that year. And so we wrote a proposal to take it into 15 preschool classrooms that were in, the, in schools. And so we did that, and we were specific. We tried to choose schools that had low-income children. But the, the real purpose of this program was we wanted children to see men reading. You know, statistics nationwide are 50% of children are raised by single moms. 
Wow. Yeah. That's nationwide. That's not necessarily Wilkes. But it is staggering to think about. And so these children don't have a male in their home every day. They don't see them reading. And so we kind of came up with, why don't we bring men into the classroom? And so we started out with 15, and it was successful. Our teachers loved it. The children loved it. The parents loved it. The volunteers were crazy about it. And we said, okay, so we need to finish out the program because the venture grant was only from September to December. And so I was sitting there and I was like, okay, we got to find funding. And so Lowe's provided an educational grant for us and we finished out the year. So then I sat in the summer and said, oh, okay, this has been good. We need to do, to do more. And so we wanted to add classrooms. And so Duke Energy, I received a grant from them and that helped. And then some private donations came in and we tweaked our money and figured it out and we did it. Um, we've now grown to 35 classrooms, and the Colnick Foundation has helped fund it the past two years. And um, it's just, it's a beautiful program, too. Um, our volunteers love it. I had an email last week, and it was the cutest little email. This man had written me, and he said, I want to be a real men reader. He said, I hear you're a rock star if you're a real men reader. And so... They oh are rock stars, and every book has a little sticker on it. It says, today I learned real men read. Um, kind of paint us a picture of how that might look in a classroom. Would there be a, kids be around, or how, does that, how do you do that? Well, it's a, it's a sweet picture. Um, typically, the, the man is sitting in the floor or in a very low chair in the classroom. We provide the books. And he goes in with the book, and he gets all of his books for the year. And so um, I can actually tell you, I, my husband is a real men reader. And this morning, I saw the book stacked up on the counter. And I'm like, oh, you're going to read today. And so um, he, he gets in touch with the teacher. We don't make the appointments. He decides and calls the teacher and says, when may I come out? They set up a mutual time. He goes out. He reads the book. The children are sitting. They're all around him. They love him. He talks about, I get group hugs when it's over. Um, oh my and goodness. so at the end, he presents a book to each child to take home. And um, they're rock stars. I don't know any other way to say it. I mean, what a wonderful. But the beauty of Real Men Read is the children get as much out of it as the volunteer reader. Yeah. And most of the men who have to take a break and no longer be a part of the program are really sad. We have volunteers that have done it every year um, and they say, please don't stop, you know, because they know in the spring is when I have to start thinking about funding for the next year. Yeah. And uh, they're so, well, please don't take that away. I love doing that. It's very rewarding for everybody. This is something a little bit, uh, a little bit different. How'd you learn to be a fundraiser? <laughs> I'm not sure. I sold Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Did you just start? You know, that's such a, a, an integral part of your program. It isn't is. It? it is. I think I was just thrown thrown into it. And I I'll give kudos to Heather Murphy at the Health Foundation. She is, she's good at it. She's good, and she has helped me along the way. And of course, I've you know taken some classes and done some things. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I'll tell you what I really believe. Tell I believe me. you can fundraise if you believe in what you're doing and you're passionate about it. And yeah. I am passionate for children in Wilkes County. And so... If you I, believe in it, that's, that's what it takes to get, to get right. going. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's the key to what I do. Yeah. yeah. You have a stake in it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How wonderful. I Susan. love children. <laughs> Susan and Cogdale, you said it... Uh, this is how you spend your life and it you we talked about that before about that passion you have for doing what you do and that's fulfilling in your life talk about that a moment well you know i i was so young when i came to wilkes county and i had the opportunity to work in the schools and i kind of was easily integrated into working with children I have to tell you, I was fearful when I took my job here because I'm an only child. And I thought, how am I going to relate to kids? And, you know, 
the wonderful thing about children is if you're comfortable with them, if you're natural, they sense that. And so I had a great experience working with, with children in the public schools. And I recently went back to Mountain View and taught some yoga classes for the uh, four and five year old preschool classroom. And it was like going home. I couldn't believe how good it felt to walk those halls. It was like just a, a wonderful warm feeling to be there. And children are so accepting. But I, I went from- Now um, these are kindergarten children? Preschool. 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 They have four preschool classrooms that are uh, through the Wilkes County school system. Yeah. Okay. But the, the work with children, uh, you know, I, I've always worked with children and families. Uh, I've had a lot of jobs. My friends laugh at me and say, you move around a lot. Um, but I taught preschool for a while. Um, I did that. And um, then I had some other jobs that involved children and families. And then I was in another county as the executive director of the Partnership for Children there. And Wilkes needed a director. So for two years, I was the a part-time director here. I served Wilkes and it was Alexander County. I drove, I took my lunch hour every day and drove back and forth between the two partnerships. Oh my goodness. Because I was that committed to Wilkes County. And so then I ended up coming back to Wilkes County full time. But I love kids. I'm, I'm the person that when you're in the elevator and there's <laughs> a family there, I'm talking to the child. I, I want to hear what they have to say. Um, and the partnership is serving 3,600 families? We try to serve around 3,600. We'd love to serve the entire population. And so each program has a little different twist and we reach families in different ways. Like I talked about the Imagination Library. Every child that is born at, let's see, what's it called now? Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center yes, in yes, Wilkes yes, County. Yep. Every child receives a stuffed animal when they're born from the partnership and it has a nice little tag on it that talks about what we do and how to enroll in the Imagination Library. So that's the way we're reaching newborns. And um, we have different programs. We have programs in the child care centers. We have outreach programs. Um, tomorrow we're doing a lunch and learn and it's about how to take out processed foods from your diet and use whole foods, and it's for families with children birth to age five. And you had a big event last month, last week. We did. Our Tell Champions us about for that. Children. It was great. It was great. Had around 186 people. Um, we had children singing and dancing, and people clapping, and it was just a wonderful experience. You said that was a defining moment in your career. Oh, I loved it. I. I it, it warmed my heart when I stood up and I was able to look out from the podium and see children and families, our funders, our volunteers, our community supporters, our community partners. It was like almost coming full circle. It was really good. Wow. Susan Cogdell, who's uh, Tucker the Turtle? Oh, Tucker the Turtle is part of our behavioral support program. He's a little turtle. And you know, when turtles don't know what to do, they stick their head in their shell. And so we use that as a behavior management technique. It comes out of Vanderbilt University. So we teach children that when something happens, instead of immediately reacting, and it may be a negative reaction, to take a moment and kind of pull in like you would if you were a turtle and think about it before you act upon it. And they're really cute. They'll take their shirts sometimes in the classroom <laughs> after they learn about Tucker Turtle and they'll pull their shirt up, kind of like, okay, I'm thinking about it. And then they come back out with their head. It's real sweet. Well, Rudy. Rudy. Oh. Please tell us Rudy. about Rudy. <clears throat> well, I raised guide dog puppies for Southeastern guide dogs. And um, I was raising Rudy and um, he would have been with me for about 12 months and he was to go back to Florida where he would be matched with someone who was blind. And he's a lab. He's a black Labrador black retriever. Lab. Okay. Um, he was about eight months old and he had a knee that popped out and so he went back to Florida. And they said he cannot be a guide dog and we cannot career change him into anything else. They said, do you want to adopt him? And I said, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, so I immediately drove to Florida and adopted him and brought him back. 
and he is a therapy dog now. I had him uh, certified as a therapy dog, and we do work together. And one of the programs is we go to the library and children read to him. Studies have shown that children that read to animals, such as a dog, can actually improve their reading skills. Dogs are non-threatening, they love you. And so the children read, rub Rudy, and then they're real cute. He's lying on the floor and they'll take the book and they show him the pictures and then they come back and read some more. Um, he's done a lot of different work with me. Um, we have visited classrooms with children who are autistic. We have visited mainly handicapped adults, nursing homes. We've done a lot of different work. Um, he has some kind of credentials like with all his visits and actually I have a hundred visits that he's done now that I need to submit to move him up in credentialing. He's with Therapy oh Dogs goodness. International but he's nine years old so he's starting to get old and gray and but he's still a love. Um, we were at the library um, Julia Turpin and Elizabeth Lee helped me co uh, coordinate that at the public library but we walked in last Monday and there was a whole crowd of children waiting to read to Rudy. Of course, he likes to sleep. <laughs> <They raise it. laughs> oh, Rudy. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors for this opportunity. It's a real highlight in my life. Wilkes Communications and River Street and WIFM. And, uh, you know, to have the opportunity to meet folks who care as much as you do about uh, the calling in life close with us, if you will, about how God has blessed you with the opportunity to, to matter. Coming back to Wilkes County after being away was a true blessing in my life. Um, I have blessings every day. Um, to be able to provide services for young children and know that you're going to make a difference in their life. One of my greatest accomplishments is to know a child when they're young and to see them become an adult and be successful and then have children. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the best feeling. It makes you realize that the world really does go around and people are good. And that's the thing that I find in Wilkes County. People are good and people want what's best. And they do the best that they can do. I want to thank you and I'm a better person because you've been here today. And thank you for accepting this invitation. I hope you'll do it again. Thank you, Gary. It's a pleasure to be here. Susan Cogdale, thank you. Thank you.